Hey everyone, it's Jessica at Pretty Prints in Paper, and I have been MIA for a little bit on YouTube, so even though I've been posting on Instagram, I want to do a flip through of one of my bullet journals from the last couple years to show you what my planning system has been like. I have been using the Archer Olive notebooks. They are amazing. I love that they can handle a lot of different media and you can't see your ink on the other side. Throughout this time, I'm gonna talk through my process and hope that you can pick up on something useful for you that will guide your own planning process and maybe get inspired with some of the art stuff that you can add into your bullet journal or planner to add a bit of creativity and your own personality into your planning system. All right. So starting off, I put in here an Erin Condren sticky note so that it can create a little corner pocket for some of the stickers and stuff I like to have on hand in case I want to add them to my planner. Uh, this is in September, so I, I follow the academic calendar and I switched over to this planner in the fall. And whenever I do that, I like to center on a word and go from big to small. And I started with the stencil and added some of the chalk inks from Ken Oliver using their big stencil brush to add something that I didn't need to draw. And it looks beautiful. <laughs> I covered part of the paper with washi tape so I could just letter on here my word and focus. And uh, in true spirit, I created something and then didn't go back to use it. So I just used some liquid watercolor to add a, an annual overview of that upcoming year. I think sometimes I have too many ideas and then I freeze and I never actually put pen to paper. So that might have been what happened here, but what I would intend to use this for is to look at where my time is going, where my money is going. So sometimes I also use this to track my symptoms or my health throughout the year. Um, but obviously never did. So take my advice as, with a grain of salt. <laughs> That's my, my problem is I always kind of go through and out of sight, out of mind. So once I turn this page, boop, forget about it. I also use a lot of liquid watercolor, which is why I also really enjoy Archer and Olive because I can create something like this and you won't be able to see it through the back. It does warp the paper a little bit, but that doesn't really bother me. My September welcome, which is just a stencil with more of that chalk ink. Getting a visual representation of my calendar. Even though I use a Google Calendar, I like to visualize and spend time getting present to whatever is coming up and seeing that, wow, I really have to do a good job of balancing my energy because I've got three very full weekends coming through. These hexagons are little acrylic stamps that are, I think, from Coco Daisy. And I just used more of the chalk inks from Ken Oliver to create this gradient across. Zooming in a little further, I like to look at months, and again, you've heard me talk about how I like to look at what is upcoming in that particular month when it comes to all the projects that I'm doing. So I had loose categorizations, being able to do home, work, my connections, I spend a lot of time doing stuff for and with other people, so that became a category. And then PPP stands for Pretty Prints and Paper, so what did I want to do for my blog and um, Instagram? Obviously I didn't actually use it, but that's the process I went through to think of the different categories so I could loosely capture some of the tasks in each. Using more hexagonal stamps I got from Foxy Fix back in the day when she sold them, I wanted to bucket the major projects that I was working on and thinking again of the couple of, of tasks that I needed to do to move those things forward and keep on track. And I intentionally leave some blank. So kind of what Marie Kondo talks about is that she leaves space open for what might show up or give open space so that you can focus more on what is there. And I also like to leave this open because no matter how much you plan, you never know what can come up for you. So I want to leave that space open. Some of my favorite ways to use my bullet journal is to visualize weekends or major trips that I'm taking. So when I was planning for the SGS New York Planner Conference, I was going to be there for three days. And what helps me is to draw draw out the, the different days and the major anchor points for how I'm spending my time there. By doing that and getting a sense of how my time is organized, I can understand what I need to do to prepare for those different things. Even though I have this on my Google Calendar, it feels different when I can write it down, it actually enters my mind, and then I can, it makes clear to me what things I need to pack for those different sessions and what I need to be prepared for. Um, I also like to have space to log the different recommendations that people give me, whether it's food or places to see, things to do. I like to have a space for that. 
the first week of school, major. I found that I didn't use this part as much because honestly, when my life is pretty full, this doesn't get used as much, but I'm definitely doing the things I need to do. I just don't document it. So in this case, I was using a Dutch door, which just means that I took two pages and I cut down the middle and cut as close to the seam as possible. I know this is scary for some of you and there's not an exact science, but I just guessed at how busy that would be and I just cut as many pages as I think I need. And even if it, some of them turn out blank, I can always fill them in with, you know, capturing some of my thoughts and chaos in my mind and try to untangle them on paper. Uh, one of the downsides is though, it kind of opens up that seam for some of the pages. So I'm sorry if that bothers you. More of that stencil and ink process. This one is one of my favorites. Some of the different lists I've used. This is a really fun take on a packing list I've seen where if you're packing some of the same things over and over, you can just create this master list of items on the side and then the different classes or trips or things that you're preparing for. In my case, classes that I do and sometimes you need things and sometimes you don't. So I created rows with mild liners and then I created boxes for the materials that were relevant for that particular class. So for trips that can be, you create boxes for whatever items you need to pack for that particular trip, but then you just make one master list and then you can create your actual checklists for that specific trip. On this extra space, because I, even though I like to keep five days, I want to space it so that it's just evenly six columns, I started tracking some habits in this corner. I kind of did a technique where I kept my most important tasks of that particular day in this box. And then I started doing this bucketing system where I had so many different categories in my mind, so many different tabs that I just wanted to get it all out. And I started doing these boxes. I made these squares with my mild liners and then just did light outlines around the edges to create space for my brain to just dump things. And the amount of space it took up was kind of a guess. I know that some projects are bigger than others, so it was just an estimation. more post-it notes. And every once in a while, I try to play around with my layout to make sure that I'm indeed using the one that works the best for me. And then I just experiment a little bit. It's like being a good scientist. You have to double check your hypothesis every once in a while and see if the results remain the same. So I started doing this with the horizontal layout and then adding some space for memory keeping here and then this kind of, I don't remember who I saw this from, but this Dutch door running task list, I think it's an Alistair method where you have all the days of the week here or the weekend for me. And then I just had different categories. So I had different running lists for my work, for personal, and then for my blog. So um, I added boxes on days where I needed to get it done by, and then I added a check mark for days where I finally got that done. I used a light, light, light Tombow to create just alternating lines so I can keep track of which goes with which task. And then I was able to kind of flip that over and add more space if I need to, but it turns out I didn't. It worked out okay. Oh, I could talk all day about the Myers-Briggs function stacks. If you ever want to hear more about it, let me know. But here's an example of when I used acrylic paint to add a layer. So I just painted it with just a thin layer of acrylic. And you can see that it does not even show up 
on the other side. Added some jelly rolls, different colors for every day. Remember pretty quickly that I don't like to carry around so many different jelly rolls, different colors. Um, I just want to do one color splash at the beginning of the week and have that be done. So I, I redid this. I like that you can fold in like a privacy thing here. And then I started doing stuff on both sides to experiment with that a little bit. Adding a little bit more of the stickers back in for some fun things like priorities is a pretty easy one for me to use different stickers for. November, what a time. <laughs> Added some thin washi. And going back to that box method where I did this for the week and wanted to just have different categories instead. And again, I left some stuff blank so that I could add stuff in as the week progressed. And, I, and then I added back in like this memory keeping piece. Here I just used a lot of Crayola Super Tips. They have more color options and they're pretty affordable. So I love using Super Tips in my planning a lot. And then I added, of course, the little stickers from one of my favorite shops, Raspberry Designs. This is where I kind of messed it up and I cut pages I didn't mean to cut. Hazard of the trade, I suppose. You can see my attempts in using all the stickers that I've gotten throughout the years. Here I do a, a merge of those two different systems where I have the week up top, I missed knowing what days were going to what, and then adding the, the different boxes for projects below. This was helpful because at the end of the year, my brain is swirling around and I need a way to capture different projects in different places. And here I built on that even more. I'm using the Tombow Twin Tones here just to create those kind of fun, not precise boxes. And then I added more space. Keeping the things up here for the dates, looking at different projects as like a weekly overview. What do I need to focus on this week? And can I bucket it into different categories? And then, with the Dutch door, adding in the dailies. This I was mapping out possible spread for my new bullet journal. I hope you can see that this is not always a very beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing in that it's mine. It's a beautiful thing in that I can literally do whatever I want to with it and that it bends with me. That's how it's a beautiful thing. I don't necessarily need for every single page though to look curated and designed and precise. I think the evolution of our lives is already a beautiful thing. So I think that's how I've been able to accept the mistakes that I make and have it be imperfect and not artistic all the time because there's parts of me that are artistic and there's parts of me that aren't. So I hope that you can see that full range and be a little less scared of making mistakes. If we lived our lives being afraid of making mistakes, we would never learn and we would never be able to build on the stuff that worked by figuring out the stuff that doesn't. So I hope this was helpful for you to see. I'm gonna continue the series and go through yet another bullet journal and you can see how the process grows from there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to list all the materials somewhere in, in the description box below. But otherwise, if something was useful to you, great. Otherwise, I hope you just enjoyed it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.